much did your year as that going to help prepare you for the end? Yeah, I think it's all it's all critical. I don't think you know it's not just carrying a title. I don't believe. I think it's probably more than that. Uh, but you know, as you continue to build in any profession, you know, more responsibilities and how you handle those responsibilities and how those those fingers reach outside of the responsibilities you're technically supposed to have really just show probably your growth potential. So it's not just me, it's anybody. Uh, and uh, I'd like to think I, I did a good job with that. Uh, but again, still a reset. Here's where I'm at now. And now where can I grow from here? And, and how can I help this team um, accomplish the goals we want to accomplish? Have you been secretly sitting around keeping little schemes you're coming up with, et cetera? I mean, for that day when you become a coordinator no. or, or you're, you're still no. what I'm saying. We, we, have, yeah. we have plenty of plays. Yeah. And we have plenty of minds. That's what I was going to say. Uh, we don't, you know, it's not like there's a, in my opinion, a secret sauce out there. Yeah. You know, so I would say no. Yeah, and so, so define what an offense coordinator is in your, in, from your vantage point, from your perspective. Is it collating everybody's ideas and putting them together? Is it coming up with something novel? I mean, you know, how would you explain it? I'm definitely multifaceted. You carry, I mean, in a coach in general, I think you, you wear a lot of hats. You don't just, you know, I think sometimes coaching receivers, uh, I'm blessed with a great room. So, but I used to say coaching is like the last thing I do, you know. So, uh, but I would say off being an office coordinator is, you know, putting your fingerprint on things that uh, you find more important than others. I mean, at the end of the day, you have an allocation of time, how you allocate that time. You have a, a list of plays and schemes and what you find, you know, you know, an A play versus a B play and a C play, that becomes probably more your identity. Uh, that's probably your responsibility. I mean, I think that uh, being able to enhance the people around you, you know, my job is, as a receiver coach is to get the best out of the receivers. My job as offensive coordinator is to maximize each, you know, guy in that room, each coach in that room uh, to what they're capable of. So that doesn't, that doesn't change, I think, uh, in the grand scheme, but maybe the dynamics within the groups maybe are a little different. But then helping uh, to identify a starting quarterback, you guys have got a competition. You don't have a returning starter at quarterback. It's kind of like, how much have you weighed that throughout your career about what makes, you know, what makes this guy different from that guy? Why do I go with this guy? Instead? I mean, it's a, I, I constantly assess players myself. I mean, I, I assess my five-year-old son. I mean, like, I, I can't watch him play sports because I'm assessing it. So that's just what we do all the time. And I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing to remind yourself sometimes is new year, new identity. Some some players are carryover, but there's new players. And every year, even new identity. These players look for a new opportunity uh, to reestablish themselves or to establish themselves. And giving them that opportunity, I think, is critical. I think sometimes the byproduct of past years gets stuck in your mind as a coach, which in my as a player, like, okay, hold on now. Like, this is my next year, new opportunity, uh, you know, maybe some older guys are gone. My voice can be louder. So you got to make sure as a coach you provide that platform to where those players can enhance themselves as well. But how, how important is it to identify when you have a brand new starting quarterback situation to identify who that guy is sooner rather than later, or do you want to let it mature? Yeah, I think I, think, I don't think there's ever a rush. I think that you know, uh, you know, I'll lean heavily on Coach Day with how that all goes down. And everyone, you know, people have a, an opinion and have a voice, but um, you know, that quarterback room. Uh, it's pretty, pretty well established over the last four or five, six years of the standard that which they operate, and uh, and Coach Day obviously um, is the reason for that, and Coach Dennis. So uh, those guys will do a great job, do what they do, and, and I'm sure I'll just be a part of the conversation. Are you noticing the dust start to settle with NIL? When you're out on the road, are you getting more comfortable with it? Is it still the wild west? Yeah, I'm, you're definitely getting more comfortable with it. I think that. The dust still has not settled. I think the only way it settles is with time. And I think, uh, you know, guys seeing the reality of, you know, what's happening and not happening, uh, what's real and not real, that won't be, that won't show until down the road. And so, uh, but it's definitely more comfortable. Uh, you know it's here to stay, so it's not as new, uh, but, uh, Definitely an uh, interesting dynamic, though. Are you guys happy with where you are in terms of whether it's you know, how it's coming in and you always are going to want more? <laughs> I get that. I, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 that's the fine balance, right? You always want to have more, and that's, that's just the reality of it. I mean, if you asked 
NFL teams and they wish the salary cap was higher, they would say, yeah, they wish it was higher. So, uh, you know, I would say that I'm really happy with where we're at. I think that, you know, I'm proud of the way we've gone about it. You know, I'm sure Coach Dakin hit on it more. I don't want to speak, you know, out of out of context there. But um, we definitely want to be sustainable. We definitely want to be, you know, very thoughtful and thorough and uh, and really, you know, do right by the young men. And I think that uh, we're doing that at a pretty, pretty good clip. You hear all these stories. Um, have you been surprised by how much a kid wants to talk about her or what's expected? Did you see it? Maybe it isn't. Maybe the percentage of how high that is in the recruiting conversation isn't what we're hearing. Well, I think it's I think it's a part of a variable. Like the variable, like anything, can change. So where those people, where, where where the young athletes place that variable in the importance of their recruitment is on them. And you know, we know it's important. We don't believe it's the most important. So all that has to match up. And I think that's really important. I think that's part of. Uh, you know, maybe the the, 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 the emphasis in, in, in the athlete's mind or family's mind and all that, and it all plays a part, right? At the end of the day, there's a bunch of variables on the table. You're trying to assess the variables and, and determine that that young man's odds of success based on the variables. That's, that's the combine, that's recruiting, that's all that. So now it's another variable. Um, how you handle that variable and how you place it is up to, you know, assessment. So at that program, if you've got a super talented guy, but his number one thing is NIL money. Yep. Stay away? Uh, it, so I, I would say this. I would say that uh, I would say that it's probably per position for a coach. I would say as a receiver coach, uh, probably not a guy that would fit in our room. So however each coach handles it and how Coach Day wants to handle it, that's fine, but I'm okay with saying that's, that's probably not the right fit uh, for us in our room. Yes, uh, that's probably natural. I think uh, the longer you're in it, the more that you know college football morphs. I mean, let's take a snap back to what college football was in 2015, and then where it is in you know 2020, 2023. I mean, it's vastly different. And I think that uh, as he continues to you know to be in the head coaching role, and there's more put on your plate, and there's more people, and there's more hands on you, and it just grows, right? And I think Ohio State demands that obviously at the highest level. So. Uh, you know, I think that he feels that more than I would ever, and uh, he's just trying to do right by what he thinks would be best to help maximize the team. And, uh, and you know, he spoke he spoke it to about it a little bit, uh, but you know, this day has come. Brian, I've talked uh, in the past about you know, maybe even taking a linear route to get to here. But when you were in college and you were in the NFL, were you paying attention to offensive coordinators in such a way that like maybe that's I'm going to do that? Can they kind of? Yep. Is that something you're excited about? Is that something that's it's a challenge because you are a receiver and you know receiver brains? Yep. Or? No, I think yeah, it's exciting. I like. I mean, I like being able to reach out to those guys. I think that you know I lean heavily on the guys uh, that help steer me. You know, I don't. I don't want to make sure. Again, I think my job as a coordinator is to help facilitate the position coaches to go after the guys they want, not to go get the guys, but to help facilitate. And, just like Coach Day helps facilitate with the receivers, but it's still my responsibility. I, that's how I feel. So uh, I lean heavily on the position coaches to help guide me on where they want it and, and where they want me or where they don't. I mean, that's really important. Uh, but I, the opportunity to meet more young men and, and make an imprint, imprint on them and hopefully get them here and that can build. I mean, the, big, the biggest part, I've told you, Berm, is before is through recruiting, I feel like, you know, the relationship part can be built because if there's no relationship, there's no coaching. You can only coach a guy as hard as the relationship allows. And I like to try to hedge my bets, not hedge my bets, but speed that process up through recruiting so when they get here, they already know, like, you know, hard, hard calls, like, it's for a reason. And not being like, oh, hey, I'm Coach Hard, nice to meet you. And it takes six months to build that relationship. It's really hard to coach in that first six months then versus when they step on campus. So just like the receivers, I would, I would feel the same way about uh, the other positions. 
your focus will be different than it's ever been before. Is it more important for you in 24 and 25 to get those relationships like right now where you don't have a lot of the other stuff around the game in, in summer? And I don't think so. I, I, and I don't mean to be uh, you know, d dismissive, but I feel like there's plenty of time in the day to get it done. I just got to be more, you know, make sure I stay organized and I don't waste time, but there's plenty of time to get it done. If you're going to experiment with these play calls this spring, is it advantageous to do so when you're also identifying the quarterback as opposed to a guy who's been consistent most of the year as a leader with the, the offense you've ran? Is there any? I don't feel any, any type of way towards that. I don't think. I mean, uh, these guys have been in the offense. They know the offense. You know, they're going to continue to build trust. And, uh, you know, I'm not worried about their, them side. It's just making sure they feel how I operate. Brian, does it help you make that transition to coordinator when you know you have three returning starters at receiver? I think having the building full of players that we have, regardless of returning starter or not, um, provides a great opportunity for anybody to call plays at Ohio State. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, regardless of returning or not, um, excited for it. So you've accumulated a lot of talent in that receiver room. Kind of what's maybe your message to those guys who aren't the returning starters on how they can earn playing time this year? Uh, you know, I think right now in the, in the offseason program, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, and I'll just share it with you, is that you know, I said right now you should be trying to impress your peers. Impress your peers. Your peers know. Players know. Uh, by trying to impress your peers, that means everything, right? Being on time, if not early, how you work, how you communicate, if you're up front, you're not in front, uh, all those things matter. And I think by doing that, you'll probably in turn impress Coach Mick because Coach Mick knows what it looks like. He runs the program. He, he's really the facilitator of all culture at Ohio State. And uh, if you can impress him, you're on the right track. I've never seen a guy um, be, you know, impress Coach Mick and not be on the field. So uh, do that, and then obviously the coaches. So if you keep your mindset on, again, impress your peers because those peers are hard to impress. That will buy a product to probably impress Coach Mick, um, and your coaches will be impressed. The rest of the care of stuff. So that's that's the focus, I would say. Uh, you know, through the off-season months. And I've seen you uh, respond to a few people on social media about yeah. Jackson Smith and Jigba's draft projections. Just what's your message to NFL teams about why you should draft I don't have a message to NFL teams. What, what are some of the most important things you think you've learned from, from Ryan about calling a game, offensive play calling, being around him for the last few years? Uh, it's not going to be perfect. You know, I think that, you know, uh, relying on those around you, for recommendations, implementing those recommendations, being okay to agree with some but not agree with some, that's okay. Uh, I mean, again, I've been on the headset with him for you know, five, six years. So um, there's been a lot to learn from. His calm, I think, has been you know, really good. Uh, you know, I think the conversations at halftime and, and how those go uh, uh, kind of resonate with me big time. So there's lots of things. Uh, to, to nail it down just to one, uh, you know, it would be hard to do. But again, I mean, you know, given that opportunity, he's still going to be on the headset with me. So it's not like I have to write him down and take it with me. He's going to be right there. So like I said, I mean, given the opportunity, uh, a lot of a lot of confidence because of the guys around me. How much, how much was Kevin a part of that? How, not weird or odd, but comfortable, uncomfortable not having him in there? I, I, don't, I don't know. That's probably, you know. Security blanket, was he? Or? Uh, I mean, I, no, I mean, Kev was full of knowledge. He would, uh, you know, communicate, keep Coach Day calm. You know, I think he was a good sounding board. Uh, so, you know, uh, again, it's not just me. It's the dynamics of all of us. You know, Justin was used to Coach Wilson being there and, and you know, and having Coach Bailey and having Tony. And so all of us played our own parts. So that, that dynamic will change. And, you know, like true pros, we'll, we'll handle that dynamic change. You've moved away the farther from the league, playing in the league. I'm just curious, if your, if your tenor, if your tone, experience has changed, like talking to guys about the NFL compared to today. I mean, is it? It hasn't changed a whole lot. Okay. I mean, I think I don't, I don't, you know, rely on that. I think the guys kind of like hearing about it a little bit, uh, but you know. They're not learning from their peers. Now we kind of now we're getting guys in the spot where you just call Chris and Garrett. You don't need me. So uh, call Terry McLaurin. Call, call Paris Campbell. So uh, that that building um, of proof in the pudding, as you will, uh, really provides them a great lifeline.
four-door drive. It was, was just, uh, my brother was here, and I kind of got in the building, and then I uh, happened to stay in the building. That's really what it was. There wasn't a plan to coach. Um, it kind of it kind of happened. They didn't have a lot, a most, a much going on in the spring of 2017, and I was living in town, and then I just never left. Do you still have that plan? Oh, we just sold them all, actually, you like last year. You all right? Yeah. Brian, last question Coach, 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 Day. Coach Day was just talking about having guys who played here, guys who are familiar with this program on staff, bring in a guy like James. I'm just curious from your perspective how being a guy who is so familiar with the program maybe is different in everything you do as an assistant coach at that program. Well, you know, I don't know. I think that would be a good question for the players, you know, because at the end of the day, that's the, only, that's the people you want to impact. Uh, you know, I guess speaking from my perspective, you know, it seems to be that you know when I when I do talk or I do uh, communicate about the university, it probably comes off a little different than just a guy that's been hired by somebody. And again, it's not a knock on Ohio State. It's just you know you go across the country and you know, that happens every day. And how many guys are former players coaching their position at the school? Probably very few. So. The conversation probably just sounds different, uh, which resonates different with the person listening. Um, you can definitely, you know, reach back in and talk about past experiences and talk about what it means to us. And you know, I think there's times of the year where that that hits. Uh, maybe there's a different passion that comes out of it, a uh, different guy's feel, maybe. But again, I, 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 it's hard for me to say versus a player answering that question. Can I follow up on that? Yeah. How much of your philosophy knowledge? Anything else that goes into coaching, could you maybe trace back to your playing days? Oh, a lot. I mean, everything, not necessarily the coaches, but just as a player, that's all I, I base a lot of, like, how I feel, how I react, how I coach, how I hold guys accountable based off of, you know, when I was a player and what I would have once done. And, and just like, you know, I know when I was full of crap, and, you know, like, that's it. So I, I almost all of it.